Hey everybody, this is Wool Dogga, Ableton Live Certified Trainer. I just want to say thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. Now the tutorial you're about to watch is a full lesson from my brand new Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 course. You can find more information about that by clicking the link in the description. But I also have a free gift for you just for watching and checking out this tutorial. Click the link in the description and you can sign up to get my free Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 guide. All right, let's waste some more time. Let's get to it. Okay, so in this lesson, I wanna talk all about follow actions. So we'll talk about both follow actions on scenes, which is a, a amazing uh, major update to session view, uh, as well as just the general updates and refinements to follow actions on clips in general. So let's head over to Ableton Live again. I am in session view. The first thing that's worth mentioning, I wanna start, you know, I don't wanna bury the lead on this one. Uh, I can enable follow actions and do follow actions on scene. So if I double click on a scene here, again, we open up our brand new scene view and then I can click follow action. And again, this is going to, going to enable uh, follow action for uh, everything in a scene. So as opposed to having to do this just on clips, like we used to have to do in session, we can do this per scene. So by default, uh, I've got this set just to next. Um, I can choose kind of the follow action chance. I now have a slider as opposed to the previous interface there. I think most live performance scenarios, uh, you're, you're going to just basically enable follow action. <clears throat> most likely choose next, but it could be uh, a lot of different options. There's a cool new jump option, which allows me to jump to a specific scene. So I could type seven, you know, for instance, and after a measure jump to measure seven. Um, again, I'm going to leave this just set to next now. And then we have action time. That's basically, um, when is this action going to happen? So by default, it's set to one measure. You can set this to four measures, you know, whatever it is. After, uh, after however long this happens, it's going to then perform next, okay? So what I wanna do is set up a couple of these. So I'm gonna enable follow action uh, just next, again, for a couple of these. Uh, so that just the scenes as we go throughout them, um, they just all enable next. And in fact, what I should mention, I could select all of these, the remaining ones at least and enable follow actions for all of those. So I don't have to go through individually like I was doing. So what basically what this means is I've enabled follow actions on scene so that I go to the next scene after a measure, okay? Um, what's cool about this is now that we have follow actions on scenes, I could go through each one of these scenes uh, and just set a new tempo uh, for each of these. And as it plays uh, that time signature, it's gonna play whatever the new tempo is, okay? And then after, again, a measure, it's going to go to the next scene. The other thing that we have here, we'll, I'll play this just for a moment so you can hear this, is we have a new um, kind of play or launch icon to show visually that a follow action has been added to this scene. We'll see what that looks like um, on clips in just a moment. Now I could close down scene view, so I don't need to see that. Let's enable our metronome just so we can hear this. And I'm just going to launch this first scene. Because I have follow actions, again, it's going to play each one of these new scenes. It's going to play it at whatever tempo I have uh, over here in our tempo and time signature. So let's launch this and let's see what happens. Oh, <laughs> I clicked that. It reminds me of one of my uh, least favorite or favorite tricks in Ableton Live, however you look at it. So we have to have some sort of clip for every one of our scenes to launch it. So I'm just going to double click to add some dummy MIDI clips, which are just MIDI clips with no data in them. Okay, so now let's try that again. Let's launch this scene and let's just listen. Okay, so here's our next scene and our next tempo. We're playing for four beats and then we're moving on to our next one. Okay, let's do one more. And then it's gonna jump automatically back up to the top. Now this is, uh, this is again, a great feature, particularly for live looping performances. Uh, a lot of people use the IEC driver to do this sort of thing where, <clears throat> you know, after, uh, after a certain amount of measures, they have a clip I see driver clip that says after two measures, launch this next scene, uh, wh which is great. That's a great way to do it. Uh, and primarily people do that so that it can compensate and use the tempo and time signature features for the scene. Um, <clears throat> but this is, a, I think, way more refined way to do this. But let's say there's a scenario where you've got follow actions programmed in. You're ready to go. You're launching through this, but suddenly you get into a scene and you go, hey, I actually don't want to continue on to the next scene. There's two ways to get out of this, okay? So let's take you back over into Ableton Live. I'm gonna launch um, this scene, okay? We'll let it play for a measure. Then I'm gonna press this button right here, which means disable follow actions globally, okay? So now I am 
uh, stuck or maybe that's not the, the best word, but I'm now just on this scene right here. And by me disabling this uh, follow actions globally button, that basically means that uh, I've taken away the ability to go to the next scene. Okay. There's another way I could do this. Let's, uh, and just to show you, so if I click this scene now, okay, it's not going to move on to the next one, even though I have follow actions uh, kind of programmed on that scene. If I enable follow actions and relaunch this scene now, then we're going to continue on throughout the process. Now, another way uh, I could get out of this, uh, let me go in. I'm going to edit these scenes so I have a little bit more time to make a decision. Let's make these two measures. So essentially on all of these, it's going to play for two measures and go to the next one. Um, let's say I'm launching this and I want to stay in this scene. What I could do now is right click and do cancel scene launch. Okay. So let me show you what I did again. I right click and do cancel scene launch. You'll notice enable follow actions globally is still enabled, right? We can click it again. Let's go on this one. Let's let it actually cycle through a couple follow actions. So three, four, boom. Okay. Three, four. It's going to go to one of three. Let's right click and let's ca uh, cancel scene launch. What that means cancel scene launch is we're going to stay on whatever scene is currently playing as opposed to progressing to the next one but it's going to keep the rest of our, our globally. It's going to keep follow actions going. Now you may think that's a great feature, but I, I don't want to have to reach over with my mouse and right click. Uh, we can access that feature via MIDI. So if I do command M to MIDI map, uh, then we can go here to the stop button and we can cancel scene launch. Same exact thing as right clicking and doing cancel scene launch. So again, that's a really, really great, uh, great feature of follow actions, uh, which, which is really, really cool. Um, again, uh, if I go back into this follow, follow action, I mentioned this earlier, but I just want to point it out again. Uh, let's actually put this into practice. I'm going to go to jump and I've got seven already enabled there. So let's launch this scene. And what's going to happen is after two measures here, it's going to jump to scene seven. Okay. So let's press one. You can see scene seven is selected. Okay, then we jump to scene seven, which is then in a measure going to go to scene eight. And it's going to jump back up to the top here right now. Okay, which is then going to jump to scene seven. Now, I want to disable that. So I disabled uh, uh, follow actions globally. So that's some really cool updates to follow actions on scenes, but there's still some updates uh, to just follow actions in general on clips. So let's dig into that. Uh, I'm going to use these dummy MIDI clips that I created earlier. Uh, as a way to uh, to kind of demonstrate this. First thing you need to know, when we're doing follow actions on clips, uh, this has all been tucked away now. Uh, we talk about this in our clip view update lesson. But if I click this fold unfold button, you now see where our follow actions are hidden for each of our clips. So I can click follow action here. Again, I could do kind of a similar thing next 100%. I have this brand new linked or unlinked option, okay? So if I choose linked, then the follow action is gonna be triggered at the end of the clip or um, after the, the clip has played a certain amount of times. So let's say if my clip is a measure long and I want this to, um, uh, to go to the next scene after uh, the end of that clip, then I'm just going to enable linked and just kind of let it be. But maybe there's a chance I want this clip to continue to be a measure long. I want it to play two times and then go on. Then I can use this follow action multiplier to update that. Okay. So let's put this back to 1x for now. So uh, that could be a really, really helpful um, uh, a thing just to really quickly speed things up. So if you have a clip that, again, is maybe uh, 64 measures long um, or each of your clips uh, here in session, you're different links and you don't want to have to go through and try to figure out the math, just linking them to the length of the clip could be a really, really helpful thing, uh, which, again, I, I think is a. Uh, it is a great feature, a great update to follow actions. Uh, let me disable this follow action just temporarily here. Uh, another really cool new feature is uh, the ability to create something that's called a follow action chain. So what I can do is select a group of clips and I can actually uh, select them in any order, but for now I'm just gonna select them sequentially. So I'm gonna start on this one, press shift and then select the last one. I'm gonna right click and I wanna do create follow action chain, okay? Uh, when I create a follow action chain, you're going to see all of these are enabled. Okay. Um, and by default, they're set to next in one measure. Now watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to enable follow actions globally. I'm going to go over here and launch this scene or this clip rather. 
They're going to play for a measure. Then it's going to go down. We're going to get to the end of this, and then it's going to jump up automatically. So it kind of automatically um, made the preference to go down, and then at the end of here, jump automatically back up. Now let me undo this just for a moment and show you. I could do this in all sorts of random order, okay? So I could skip a few, do this one, and then do this. And I could right click and do create follow action chain. And this time, it's gonna jump all over the place, right? So jump to there, that one, this one, and then jump back up. And so that's another really cool feature uh, of follow actions and updates to follow actions. Uh, again, I think this is uh, most useful for live looping performances. Um, you can eliminate almost all the reasons that you use the IEC driver for a live looping performance um, and either do follow actions on scenes or uh, use the brand new features of follow actions on clips. And I think you're going to go uh, way further faster than if you had to use the IEC driver. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. As a reminder, don't forget about that free gift that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Click the link in the description to download that for free. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I would love to have you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever we post new content, start a live stream. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye.